Are we? Superboy 65. Gathering the greatest gallery of guest stars in the galaxy. It is one of those issues filled with guest stars. And also filled with wasted guest stars. We have got a fraction of them on the cover here. Pratt's son, he is there. He only just makes it under this cover here. So that is good for him. And we open with... If there is one thing I ate the most at DC, it is how they treat the Alec Rose Tragic Kingdom story as if it is gospel. They are always trying to assert characters or ideas from that into the main DC universe while ignoring the fact that absolutely nobody would ever want the DC universe to end up like Tragic Kingdom. We have one of those things here. In Tragic Kingdom Booster Gold runs a Planet Hollywood style superhero themed restaurant. Now, he also does in the main DC universe. This is its only appearance. It is treated as if it's already been set up and established somewhere else. That this is all summit we know. And it is never referred to again after this issue. It's just there, and then it isn't. Making it even worse is that there is no need for this. Green Lanterns, the Gary Gardner version, he already runs a Planet Hollywood-style superhero-themed restaurant in the main DC universe. There is absolutely no reason to give Booster Gold one besides continuing to suck off Alec Rose's enormous ego. Superboy, he has just gotten back from a jaunt across the multiverse. That is him there. Rather than talking about him, the comic wants me to hurry up and turn the page because we have what feels like 10 pages setting up a new Champions of the Underknown series. A series that never manifests. I don't think so anyway. I don't mind these characters, the champions of the Underknown. Even if I'd rather read Fantastic Force like everyone else. I think they are something that can work, but they often don't get much of a platform to show it. The knock-on effect of that is... When they show up in a story like this, when they show up in Superboy or Superman, I am not invested in these characters because they have not had much opportunity to appeal to me. The Champions of the Underknown, I think they would work best as supporting characters in... Well, something like this. Have them be working at Project Pegasus with Superboy. I think that would work more than, once again, trying to give them their own series. This backdoor pilot here, it doesn't pay off. This creative team, though, they probably could have gotten me to check out a Champions of the Underknown series. But the next series isn't until six years later, and it has nothing to do with this. I don't think it even has the same characters in it. Most my knowledge, or rather 
awareness of the champions of the Underknown comes from appearances in Superman and Superboy. Adventurings of Superman 508. I remember that well. I think the only time I have actually read one of their comics is New Champions number one, which I don't think I even finished. I do know that Jeremy Ordinary did them in the New 52, and when I found out about that, I got excited about that prospect. But then I've never bothered to read it. When Superboy was away travelling through the multiverse, well, he was gone for a while. So Project Pegasus, they are looking for a new agent to replace Superboy. And this is the reason for our guest stars. We have got a lot of them, members of the Tiny Titans, Kyle Reese Green Lanterns, the Creeper. Many of them are not written that well. They are depicted as selfish assholes or clumsy buffoons who bump into each other. I am pleased to say that of all of them, Pratt's son, he comes off quite good. He is trapped well, which is more than I can say for some of the other ones. And worst of all is, we have the Mattel men there. And they are the fucking worst DC characters around. If I never had to see the Mattel men again, I would be a happy camper. So we have all these guest stars like Kyle Reese Green Lanterns. And they don't really do anything that justifies them being in this story. They are gratuitous cameos. Some of them aren't written very affectionately and the rest are almost just there to be there. They are written quite pedestrian. But I think the standout one is the flask bad guy Heathwaif. Probably because he is the only one with a character thing here. He has shown up for this job posting because he is wanting to go straight. He is quitting crime because crime doesn't pay. But maybe a job, a Project Pegasus will. There is a lot of debate about him being a bad guy and whatnot. And how they cannot possibly trust him. But then he exposes, hidden alongside all the guests, disguised as Spit and Swallow, are Richard and Judy, who are wanting to rob Project Pegasus. Do Americans even know who Richard and Judy are? They are... They were... They might still be, I didn't know, I didn't watch live television anymore, TV presenters. Richard, famously, has descended into a real-life Alan Partridge over the years. You look at the beach and you think, ah, oh, pretty, pretty, lovely golden sand, that's safe. Yeah. Uh-uh, not in certain parts of the country. Quicksand and a horrible way to die. Why should I not be allowed a GMT or a glass of wine with the meal on yeah. a flight because of these idiots? Having knocked someone out, which means you've given them brain damage, that's medically speaking. You know Gabby Roslin, the presenter? Mm. Once I saw her in a restaurant and I was chatting to her and she was super thin and slim and looking great and I said, I said Gabby, are you, are you expecting? <laughs> so she went, no, what are you suggesting? I said, it's all right, we had a laugh. Um, now, probably because of all the programming that I've done, particularly with Judy, about anorexia and eating disorders, I'll say this, I probably would have clocked it. What happens is Superboy shows up and the day is saved from Richard and Judy and he reunites with his friends and Project Pegasus decides to hire Heathwaif as an extra agent because he was the only person there 
who actually caught Richard and Judy's infiltration. I didn't even name half the guest stars. But I am a bit angry they put the Mattel men on the cover. I would rather watch Metal Corrodes than read about the Mattel men. Even if the story being told is them corroding. I like the creative team. I like most the guests that aren't on the periodic table. I don't really like this issue. I think a lot of these characters were wasted as backdrop and wallpaper. Nice to see Pratt's son get some respect. That was the best part. So I give it seven thumbs up. Do you make a lot of money? Are you rich? Are you rich? Uh, yeah. Are you? 